you want to get different results on your farm, you have to make some changes and one of those changes you may be considering is improving your soil fertility. To begin with, you need to have a good soil sampling program and we're getting close to that fall opportunity for many farms across the country. We're going to talk about fall soil sampling. Well, if we talk about the actual taking of a sample, there are really a couple of things that are super important. Number one is when you're using a soil probe, make sure you're pointing that probe straight up and down and go to the exact same depth every single time. Now we do get the question, should I go six inches deep? Some people talk about four inches deep. Maybe it's a foot. How deep do I really go? Look, for most people, six inches is what we're going to recommend. That's kind of the standard in the industry. We've done a bunch of stuff at a foot. There are some people that are in no-till that like four inches, but for most people, we're just gonna say a six inch soil sample is great. Yes, it'd be nice to have a deeper sample for nitrate or sulfate, but six inches, if you just wanna pull one, that's probably your depth. If you've never taken a sample before, this seems a little bit daunting. You say, boy, I'm not sure, but uh, like Brian said, it's really a pretty simple process. Then you just bag those samples up, send them into a lab. Now, there used to be some different things that people would do, drying samples and these kinds of things. What we found uh, is our soils lab, we were, work with Midwest Labs in Omaha with our farm. Uh, we just send it in how it is, and they take care of it from there. Uh, so it's really been a pretty simple process. We're normally pretty dry in the fall, but sometimes we're not. Sometimes our soils have some moisture to them, uh, but you can send in samples either way. One of the most important things is where you're going to pull these samples from. There are a couple different ways to look at this. Yes, you could do grids or you could do zones. One of the things that we often tell people too is you can adjust your, your point where you're going to pull that sample in the grid or in the zone based on certain spots you find on your yield map. So if you've got a really high yielding spot or a really low yielding spot, maybe you want to adjust your grid point or your zone point to that one spot to figure out, well, what's really going right there or what's really going wrong there? And then ideally, we'd like to see you keep that same spot for tissue sampling next year. So it is kind of important to look at where these spots are and we're gonna base some of that stuff on the yield monitor. Like we talk about with many things on Ag PhD, we always walk before we run. So if you've never done this before and you say, I really wanna get good at this, how do I do it? I'd pick one field. Maybe it's a field that you own and it's really close to home and you kinda of watch it quite often. That'd be a great place to start. Get some grid soil samples this fall so you kind of have an idea across that field uh, what you've got going on and then you can start addressing it with variable rate application of fertilizer out there uh, as Brian mentioned plant tissue sampling and, and so forth. Okay forward. the most important thing though that we want you to get out of today is make sure you're running a full analysis on your soil. Don't just get N, P, and K. Make sure you get soil pH, cation exchange capacity, micronutrients, base saturation. Get everything. Get a complete test. And then over the course of this fall and next winter, we're going to teach you how to read that soil test so you can make your own recommendations for your farm for next year. Weed control can make that kind of difference as well. We'll show you how to stop this week's Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.